Polycystic ovary syndrome is really common, maybe one in six couples. This is part of why they're having difficulty having a baby. But there are certain medical treatments and sometimes even requiring in vitro fertilization if necessary that can overcome this and there's really good hope. Looking at polycystic ovary syndrome, it's a problem releasing an egg and it's a problem when an egg is released to get a good egg. And so many times, folks in our field, even physicians, even a specialist, look at a time frame to get pregnant in a month because a woman's menstrual cycle usually is a month. So what have you done for me lately? This month, lately, this month, this month, this month. But as we've come to understand polycystic ovary syndrome, it is really the tip of the iceberg of a bigger issue that's genetically based and has a problem with metabolism of the body. So the foundation of polycystic ovary syndrome is really a genetically based metabolic disorder that happens to hurt eggs. And we can recognize that because women should cycle regularly and release one and they may not. To make the diagnosis, we're looking to see is there any evidence of a thyroid issue, pituitary gland issue, or on top of the kidney, the adrenal gland that can cause irregular periods and excess hair growth. And if we don't find that, then we entertain the diagnosis of PCO, polycystic ovary syndrome. And we really wanna see two of three things. Irregular periods, which is usually the hallmark of why we're even asking the question. Some physical sign of male type hormone excess, excess hair growth or acne, which can be major or minor. And then with ultrasound, instead of seeing maybe eight or more little resting follicles, it'll look like a string of pearls around the rim, probably 12 or more, even 20 or more, almost soap suds looking ovaries at times. So we wanna see two of three things of those. Irregular periods, male type hormone excess, and the ultrasound. Two of three things of those and eliminate a thyroid, pituitary, and adrenal gland issue. And this is how we now, in 2014, make this diagnosis. So many folks that wanna treat this condition just go to a medicine like Clomid um, and say, we gotta get you to ovulate these women are at risk for getting too many eggs out at once or not responding at all. And the pattern of this condition is that it's unpredictably unpredictable. So if you're looking for a pattern and can't find one on all levels, that is the pattern. And folks often overlook that and just say, we're going to run and gun. What we need to do to treat this, this condition is first think like an internist, which isn't month to month. It's people that take care of diabetes and heart disease, which is a lifetime issue. And we have to look at their insulin resistance, look at medicines that can help calm things down, a lower carb, higher protein diet, and exercise just as a baseline, and treat it more medically than reproductively. We know that the underlying issue is a more broad-based medical issue. And if we just push an egg out, we may not get a good egg out, right? So in this way, there's much more hope. The problem is that our tools and tests to assess eggs and it really doesn't tell us the exact egg quality. A young woman can have wonderful eggs or with PCO they can be awful or a great variability in their quality. So PCO brings in a dimension about eggs that is just not age related. Polycystic ovary syndrome is a condition that affects eggs that is age blind. I think that's really the idea. So we must consider treating the fundamentals irrespective of whether a woman's heavy or not. She doesn't have to be three times the woman she is to have the problem. It's just gaining weight causes more issues with sugar metabolism and the risk of diabetes. Some of the biggest work for women with PCO is lifestyle change. And as much as it's, doc, give me a pill, I wanna get pregnant and have a baby, it's amazing. People also are asking for, how can I do things away from medicine to make a difference? And this is really it. But many people don't want to do that part, which is a lower carb, higher protein diet. Our dietitian, Nancy Padilla, is amazing in working with folks and coaching them and continuously. And we will see dramatic differences in the reproductive potential. And that's just the foundation. Then we can help get an egg out and more likely it'll work. And we've seen this, whether it's with just treating the PCO part with no fertility medicines, some women will start to ovulate on their own, or using fertility medicines to get out one egg and at times we even go to in vitro fertilization because there's such variability in egg quality, nothing else is working, and we're surprised that egg quality is so variable and the genetics of an embryo forming is so variable, and a lot of embryos aren't normal, even in young women with this condition. And it will require persistence and effort because it's variable independent of a woman's age. Medical treatments work wonderfully, and at times when nothing else is working, we consider in vitro fertilization, and there's good hope to have a healthy baby.